we have to understand one day that we have to go beyond something which is called as matter and we also have to go towards spirit as that's what the scriptures also inform us about so rahu actually can never be bad if we use it in a proper way so rahu will always give a temptation but that free will is always there with us do we want to indulge in that or not so for example as you were talking of you know <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, many times people tell me that you know oh, what to do you know like uh, there was one lady she was from UK and then she told me that you know oh I like your videos very much but one thing that you tell in the videos is you know you should abstain from alcohol it's very difficult you know it's the way uh, the culture in UK is you know how can you just say no and then I said well madam you can still say no <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to hang you if you say that you know oh my god i can't so always remember with rahu that the free will is always there and rahu in a good way can represent see rahu represents innovation basically rahu ketu represents the boundaries they say where, wherever rahu ketu is sitting you have to break the boundaries and go to the other side now that can happen in a good or in a bad way also that is dependent on us i have seen uh, like uh, if you remember uh, last time we were discussing on the charts of many of the people who i know on spirituality and if you remember the last chart which i was showing which you will definitely not remember but i i always remember that chart uh, that was a chart of a capricorn ascendant and that person has rahu in the ascendant now this person uh, i have stayed with him from around 2011 around and whenever there was a need to do something new in in the spiritual community i'm not saying in the material circle in the spiritual community which would which would benefit everybody else then he would be the first one to uh, say yes to it he would be the first one to suggest that we can do this like this we can do it like that for example, uh, when I was in SRM University in Chennai, so what happened was uh, one of my uh, seniors, uh, he went to distribute or give a Bhagavad Gita into the hostel. And then the warden, he caught him and said that you cannot give religious books here. It's okay to distribute other books, you know, but religion and spirituality it is not allowed here, you know. India is a modern country. India is civilized. These books are for the old and the wretched and the outdated people. You know, we should distribute civilized books, not uncivilized books like the Gita, of course. So then this senior, <laughs> whose chart I was showing that day, he said, okay, if uh, they are talking like this, then we can... Uh, we can make some new books on topics like personality development, you know, how to be positive in life, how to improve your efficiency, <laughs> how to study properly. So then what he did was he prepared a course and a curriculum. And this was something very out of the box, you know, I mean, no, no spiritual guru would say that, you know, oh, we should directly give the Bhagavad Gita. Why to, you know, give such topics, you know, these are unnecessary, although they are good. But then he said, well, if they are not letting you enter the hostels, how will you give these books? So this is an example of Rahu, which is uh, very well placed. Now, I'm not talking of Rahu's placement in Capricorn or in, Ascend on, or in his Ascendant. I'm just giving this as an example that uh, before you say that Rahu is bad. Now, Rahu can be so and so called bad in other ways that it represents breaking boundaries. So, for example, if you are married and then if you think of you know uh, crossing the boundaries and uh, going uh, and starting an affair somewhere that that is where rahu is uh, you could say in you know, a quote and quote it's bad so breaking yeah. the boundaries doesn't mean it is good or bad it could be good if you are uh, in tune with the spiritual you know energies it can be horrible it can be horrendous it can be disastrous for you or for your family or for everybody else if you are not so uh, that's the biggest uh, solution for Rahu. I feel that we should uh, read the scriptures. We should, you know, as you said, mantras, you know, about Goddess Durga also you said. So then we will know when to break the boundary to what extent 
and when should we pause the put the full stop you know <laughs> because many times in the name of innovation or just in the in the name of doing something new we break some tradition which we should have not you know and and on the other side you will see sometimes just for the sake of following a tradition we continue such certain things which we should not continue and which we should have broken long back so that is where you know your uh, rahu comes and rahu plays and rahu can deal with fanaticism also and rahu can also deal with uh things like being over confident you know yeah being, being yeah. thinking that my way is the highway that what i know is because see, that's what the cloud is now they say that uh, a tree which has a lot of fruits now is always bent <laughs> There's a lot of big, big fruits in the tree. You will see it's always bent. <laughs> but that means if somebody has knowledge, actually, he knows that there's so much that I don't know because he knows so much. <laughs> so that is why he's humble. But a person who doesn't know, he will always boast and you know, he will always show because Rahu represents the cloud, the showbiz. So the people who are ruled by Rahu as I was talking to Dr. Arjun Pai and uh, Sam Jeppy also regarding this and Sam Jeppy said very properly that Rahu is the head you know it, it's disconnected with their digestive system so sometimes Rahu can give you this feeling that you can die you take too much information I, I know this I know that I know this also I know that also have you seen people discussing about politics you know, of India, of London, of you know, US, of Russia. And then sometimes I wonder that how can you know politics so deeply of four countries? And then these same people will discuss about cricket, about everything in the world, you know, except self-realization, except asking the question, sir, who am I? <laughs> except that everything they will know, everything they will ask, everything they will talk. So you, it's great to talk about politics and such stuff. At the same time, you should also ask this question that, who am I? What will happen to me one day? You know, I will die one day. This material body is going to perish. And what will happen to me at that time? So that question, every person who has Rahu prominent, you know, either it's uh, in the ascendant or with the moon or with the Lord of the ascendant, should always ask this question. What's the end goal of life? And Along with that, if you take Rahu, you channelize it in a proper way. Well, Rahu can do wonders for you. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So one of my teachers, um, Simon Chikoisky, used to say that you can sometimes look at K2 for remedy when it comes to Rahu because K2 is the moksha karaka and Rahu is your desires before moksha. Uh, that, you know, the, the and... You know, I, I'm Aquarius ascendant, and then Rahu is there, so Rahu is in own sign, and and then it's Satibishak Nakshatra, so it's in own Nakshatra. But my K2 is in seventh house, so I've been married three years, and my ho my wife her her whole uh, purpose is to um, stop reincarnating. Uh, for for me, I could just keep reincarnating. We we have this discussion all the time. Like I love life. I love the experience of life. If I could be immortal, maybe I would. And my wife's like, I'm doing everything I can so that this is my last life. And then I also have K two in the seventh house. So. So through my wife and my marriage, I've, I've learned so much about uh, what, the, what the ultimate goal of life is. And there's Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha, but it is say that Moksha is the ultimate aim. In other words, we have to satisfy Dharma, Arta, Kama before we can experience Moksha, but we can't forget that Moksha is ultimate. And one of the biggest remedies of Rahu is I feel to just sit down and do what you should do. <laughs> like, for example, you know that you should do something. Yeah. And you know that there's that procrastinating tendency inside you. Uh -huh. you, know that, uh, you know you should be doing it, but there's that some feeling which is lurking inside, you know. <laughs> Facebook. 
<laughs> yeah so that's what people do and one of the biggest remedies of rahu also i feel is that you should you should keep distract you should not put yourself in a position where you know that you will get distracted you know there's this uh, two things which in scripture they say na yama and dama 